Tennessee and Florida was an overtime game. Like ten, I mean, Tennessee's got a you your stock price is falling at an alarming rate for Tennessee. It is. And yet they keep winning. Well, not last week, but like yeah, they, they didn't look very good at all. Um 4.5 yards per attempt is probably not going to work. Is against this a, a Nico thing or is this an offense thing? Because now we're starting to get into an interesting conversation about how do we, um, and it happened in the um, the editorial sort of newsroom, like how, how do you evaluate quarterbacks? Because there's the evaluation of your talent and your skill. There's the evaluation of what you can do. And then at some point, I mean, shoot, I've got to figure out a midseason All-American ballot by noon tomorrow. Like, and this isn't is easier to do with quarterbacks, but like at some point we've got to talk about like what have you done within the context of this season? So where where does the blame go for the fact that Nico undoubtedly, unquestionably, has not lived up to the preseason expectations? So I think there's a couple things. One, my opinion entering the season on Tennessee was that the starting offensive line was going to be pretty damn good and that the drop-off to the backups was pretty perilous, and so they had to stay healthy. I don't think the starting offensive line has played pretty well, right? Especially after, after reviewing that NC State game. I mean, NC State might just be like hot trash on defense this year. And in fact, I think Wake Forest would agree and probably Syracuse as well. So they really don't have many good games against, uh, let's just say, like, competent defenses so far with the offensive lines. The offensive line has not played well enough. Teams are doing a lot of the drop eight stuff on Nico. I don't see a lot of guys making plays after the catch when they do catch it. Like who are the real special receivers right now? They're not getting over the top a lot. And I mean, Nico missed one tonight that I saw. Maybe like maybe there was, there was another I didn't see. Samson still looks pretty damn good. Like that yes. they're lucky. They're not lucky. I mean, they recruited the kid, but like, they are fortunate that they have Samson. Otherwise, they probably have another loss on this schedule. So, to me, part of it's certainly Nico, uh, but also they need to be able to like push people around in certain situations and and are not totally able to do so. And if Samson's not kind of bailing them out right now with explosive runs, uh, then they are struggling a little bit. So, uh, you have to be a little stocked down on Tennessee. It's not to say they shoot; they could still make the playoff, like legitimately here. They ten and two could easily happen. It's not crazy to think they could beat Alabama in two weeks or, well, next week, I guess. But um, you have to be stocked down a little bit. They're sandbagging. <laughs> They'll be fine. Just not putting anything on tape for the Bama game. That's all. Bama awesome. secondary is going to get torn apart. So, Still believe in Nico. Don't think Tennessee's playing very well. I, I don't think Tennessee is playing very well. I think that we've talked about their offensive line for you know a, a little bit now. Um, there's a I'm not ready to come around to it yet, but I've started to sense this conversation. So Josh Heupel gets to UCF. That first year is a banger. And like, look, he was still good enough after that, obviously, to get tapped for the Tennessee job. But when he got hired for the Tennessee job, amidst all the mess for Jeremy Pruitt, there was a tone and a tenor of the conversation that was a little bit like, oh yeah, this is who you get to sell tickets because he's going to score touchdowns and he's he's going to be able to keep things exciting. And so you know he can sort of tend the program while you get through this NCAA mess. Then he has that phenomenal 2022 season expectations really start to change for what the Josh Heupel experience is going to be. But the question and the notion that I've sort of picked up on, and I don't, I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other is, are we seeing something similar where those first impressions and that sort of like instant effect might be some of the best that you get? I don't want to go there yet because I've already been burned. It, Tom and I had a show bet. I think I owe Tom dinner on this, that neither Heupel nor uh, Beamer would make it past year six. And Heupel's going to probably make it there. Beamer, who knows? Like South Carolina, everybody gets fired. Like you take that job because you get rich and then you get fired and then you go to, like nobody, nobody hasn't been fired from South Carolina since before World War One, I, I believe. So, you know, that's actually a fact, I think. Or maybe, well, the one guy died on the job. So he doesn't count, I guess. Um, Football guy. Yeah. 
but yeah, I mean, it's there were like the concerns I had about Hypo though at UCF were more about I didn't think that that staff recruited real well, not the on field stuff as much. So th this is a little bit surprising to me. Yeah, I mean, I, to me, I think the bigger problem isn't the offense; it's they don't have the top end speed receiver. Like we can talk, it was Hendon Hooker, but he also had Jalen Hyatt who was burning teams and they couldn't cover him. There's no Jalen Hyatt on the team right now. I think if you had that guy and forced teams to actually cover the entire field and help get them out of the cover eight a little bit, it'd be more effective. But I just don't think they have game changers at receiver right now. I think Brew McCoy is Brew McCoy. He's been around for a very long time. Squirrel White doesn't look right. I, I don't know if he's 100% or not, but he hasn't yeah. looked like the guy we saw last year at any point this season. I just don't think they have game changers at that spot right now. I think that they need to rely on the running backs because the running back is the best player on the offense. 